wise man once said, limitations only exist in our minds. And if we use our imaginations, our possibilities become endless. Currently, we're about 16 miles off the coast of Rhode Island in the Atlantic Ocean to show you that. The very first offshore wind project in the history of the United States. It was installed by NECA and the IBEW, the Powering America team, construction's finest electricians, by land and by sea. Offshore wind was forever just a dream in America, despite its supreme advantage. Coastal winds blow stronger and more consistently than they do on land, and it isn't even close. Scientists at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Colorado use this map to show where offshore kinetic energy, wind, is the strongest. The wind is constant on the East Coast, which people in some circles describe as the Saudi Arabia of wind. In Texas, they say drill, baby, drill. In Rhode Island, we say turn, baby, turn. Some experts believe that offshore wind can legitimately generate 7,200 terawatt hours of electricity a year. In simple terms, 7,200 terawatts is double the amount of all the energy we use in the U.S. today. That's due in large part to the mechanics of a specialized turbine. How it's designed to prevent wind or salt air from getting in and, and affecting the mechanical equipment. The other challenge that you have offshore is that you have to anchor these structures to the seabed. And so off Block Island, we're in about 90 feet of water. So we specially built uh, these steel foundations that are anchored to the seabed with piles. And so that steel structure is then standing over the water and we then can erect the turbine and the tower, that white tower that you always see, uh, above that steel structure after which the cable could be ran to send the generated electricity from the soon-to-be-completed turbines back to the island, 30 miles of it, at a gross weight of more than 5 million pounds. That big, heavy cable is then buried in the seabed. It's actually buried about four to six feet deep. After that stage takes place, then you build the turbine itself on top of that platform. And that's three pieces. You have the tower, you have the, what's called the nacelle, which is the generator that actually produces the electricity and then the blades. Throughout the construction process, all eyes from the energy community to the developers, to financiers, to the general public, everyone was watching this project, leaving little room, if any, for mistakes. In a project like this, obviously you have to get it right the first time. It's the first project, it's symbolic, all eyes are upon you. So you need to work with professionals like the folks involved with Powering America, work with us collaboratively, and together we can have successes like this. Construction went spectacular. It was a two-year construction schedule. We started in the summer of 2015. And it went very quickly and very well. This is scary stuff. I mean, these are hundreds of feet above the air, out in the open ocean. There's no room for error, and they've nailed it. And that's, I think, on account of better training, you know, better focus on safety, um, these are highly trained uh, electricians, and it's working. It's a gorgeous thing. I've never seen anything like that on this scale in Rhode Island yet. Um, we don't really have wind farms, so to see it myself, it was, it was pretty amazing. The blades and all of the pieces coming off of the docks and just getting stacked, and just to watch everything come up out of the ground was just incredible. I'm proud of Local 99 and proud of the IBEW, and uh, we lived up to what we claim, the best in the business. Safety um, is the biggest priority, and just to be done right the first time is also a, a huge priority that needed to be done, and that's why the IBW did it. We're a part of it in two, two aspects. One, the temporary building facility, which we worked with the Latin Electric on, and then the windmills themselves, building them onshore and then going offshore and putting them together. We were responsible for building three substations. Those substations were required because deep water wind produces 90% more energy than can be used on the island. And for me as the governor, it gives me unbelievable pride uh, in these men and women when I go out there and I see them working 
and it's hard work and it takes brains and brawn and courage and a belief in their work and they're doing it and so I'm grateful for them for playing such a key role in this which as I said is just the beginning. The Block Island wind farm is now supplying enough power for 17,000 homes, more than is required for the island, and then some. Thanks for your time and attention to this story today. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and Twitter for behind the scenes extras and industry information. A big thank you goes out to GE, to the state of Rhode Island, and Governor Gina Raimondo, and everyone at Deepwater Wind for their help and assistance with this story. I'm Dominic Giratano. See you next time.